All right. Welcome everyone. This is Jen and Zoe, the jumping cricket apparently today. Uh, we are going to do a kids club on how to make this cool little yarn bird. Anyway, I think I can put it in my that thing. Are you gonna put it in that thing? That's real yeah. descriptive. Maybe a maybe we can make it a birdhouse later. Is that what you're gonna put it in? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna make a yarn bird for our birdhouse. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get started here. Um, so there's going to be instructions. I think they're posted in the chat right now. Is that right, Lindsay? Looks you're on mute. Chat. Looks a little fat. I think I see them in the yes, chat. I'm gonna post them into the chat now. So chat will be disabled so other people won't be able to chat through there, but please submit your questions through the Q&A and we'll answer them in the Q&A. Awesome, thank you. All right, so let me walk you through uh, the materials that we're gonna be using. I wanna show you the bird just a little bit closer up. So this is a yarn bird and we're using three different colors of yarn. Um, you can do this yarn bird however you want. So if you have different colors than I have, I've used white and a speckled gray and a red. But if you wanna make a blue bird or a rainbow colored bird um, or a bird that's all one color, that's okay too. Just remember if you're using one color, you, you, um, you lose some of the definition that you're going for with the, uh, in the bird. So you might not be able to see the wings as well or you know the back stripe here. So, all right, so what you're gonna need are your yarn colors. And um, they, they can be whatever brand you want. Um, if you wanna buy the ones that are specific to the project, you can click on the link that Lindsay left in the chat. And those will take you to the specific yarn that we're using. Um, if you have a thicker or a thinner yarn, so I chose a thin yarn to get the speckled gray. So I'm gonna talk about how to alter the project so that you get the same result with a different thickness of yarn. All right, then you're gonna need some pipe cleaners and I've picked a black one and an orange one. So you can use whatever color you have on hand or whatever color you want. Uh, this is gonna be for the feet. So you can see this bird has the black, but if you wanna give it an orange, orange feet to match its beak, that's okay too. What about pink? You can do pink feet, absolutely. I do mine. Okay, go get some pink. Um, you're gonna need a piece of cardboard, so just a scrap piece of cardboard. This can be from a cardboard box. This can be, uh, you know, pieces off of a cereal box or a cracker box or anything you have um, at home. You're gonna need some scissors, kids safe scissors. Uh, if you have trouble cutting the cardboard, I would recommend that you use a thinner cardboard to do your template. So if your scissors aren't very um, sturdy, then definitely use a thinner piece of cardboard here. And then googly eyes, of course, because our bird needs some eyes. And then I have a piece of the craft paper that is orange. All right, and some glue. I'm just using the Elmer's glue. Um, but you can use whatever regular glue you have as long as it's the kind that dries clear. All right, Here let's is. see any questions before we get started on cutting our template. Now can I color? Have, oh, we do have a question on um, the size of the cardboard. It doesn't really matter as long as they cut it down to the size that you have shared, correct? Yes, so I'm gonna give you guys the sizes. Um, so to make this size bird, you are going to wanna cut your cardboard. You're gonna need two different sizes. So you're gonna want a piece that is um, three inches wide by, sorry, one at a time. Three inches wide by four inches long. And then you're gonna want another one that's three inches wide by five inches long. So what I did was I just took a ruler and measured off on my piece of cardboard. Let me make myself some space here. So I found the straight side and 
I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to go three inches away from the end and make a couple marks three inches away from the side. And then I'm going to align all those marks with my ruler and I'm going to draw the length of the ruler. All right. So now I have my line right here that is three inches from the side. And then I'm going to start with my biggest template, which is the five inch long template. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to measure from the end here and make a couple of marks where the five inch section is. And then I'm going to align all those marks and draw down the side. All right. So now I have, you can see my rectangle. So it's three inches this way and then five inches down this way. And then you can cut that out with your scissors. And again, if you don't, if you have uh, lighter duty scissors, um, you can either have your parents cut this for you or you can use a thinner cardboard. So you can use, like I said, a cereal box or something that has a really thin cardboard wall to it. Um, we're just looking for some recycled cardboard. All right, so you're gonna cut that out, set it aside, and then we're gonna measure the next one. So that one is three inches wide, which lucky for me is what I have left over here. And then I'm gonna measure up four inches from the end and make a mark and do it again. For people who do not have a ruler, do you have a tip on how they can um, estimate the size of the cardboard? Ooh, yeah. Um, so if you have, let's see, think about this for a second. If you have a glue bottle, an Elmer's glue bottle, it's going to be, you can, it can be about the same width as your glue bottle. And the small one, here, let me cut it out and I can show you. The small one will be the same size here. as the length. Good job. H-E-R. That's her. Oh. Now I have to do one more. One more. Yeah. All right. Okay. So the smaller piece here is going to be the same length as the glue bottle at the top. So from the neck down, it'll be the same length and you can do the same width. The other piece, you're going to want to take your whole length of your glue bottle. And so that, that way you'll get the longer piece. So yes, you could use your glue bottle to get that measurement if you don't have a ruler. If you have a ruler, I would recommend using your ruler um, instead. All right, so now that we have the templates, I have a little tip for you guys I want to show you um, that, that helped me when wrapping this. Um, take your, your template and then just on one of the sides of the short one, so the one that's the shortest, you're going to cut a little notch in the end, tiny little thing, like a quarter of an inch, and you're going to do one on the other side. And then you're going to take your big one and you're going to do one on the side here like that. All right. So the big one's going to have one notch and the little one's going to have one on each side. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us when we're wrapping, we're going to tuck the end of yarn into this little notch and then we can go around and not worry about it falling off. All right. Any questions, Lindsay, about the templates so far? Can you repeat the measurements? One more time. So the smaller template of the two, can you see that? Sorry, there we go. The smaller template of the two is three inches wide and four inches long. So three inches by four inches. And then the larger template is three inches by five inches. So the same width, but it's an inch longer. Okay.
Now we're going to wrap yarn. Zoe, do you want to wrap some yarn? Uh, you want to do a yarn wrap? Oh, I was going to keep on coloring. You can keep on coloring if you want. I want to keep on coloring. All right. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our template that I just made, and you're going to, like I said, you're going to tuck the string of your your first color. So for our bird, the top of it is red. So whatever color you want to be on the top is the color that's going to have to be the longest. So that's the only one you're using the long template for. So if you're choosing a different color than red, just make sure that whatever your top color is that you want, you use this big template. So I'm gonna take the red and I'm just gonna pass it through this little notch. So see how the notch holds the string? So that way when I start wrapping it, it's not gonna come unraveled. And I'm gonna go around 25 times. Now, if you have a really thin yarn and you want it to look thicker, you can go around more than 25 times. So my yarn is a little thin. I'm gonna go around 30 times instead of 25. Mm -hmm. I know, that's a lot of times. That can make you, me sick. That will make you sick? We are, we're not spinning 30 times, but the string is. All right, so yeah. if you have a thicker yarn, maybe you only go around 20 times. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna get started here. I'm, I'm gonna go around 30 times and you're just going around like this. So that's one, and that's two, three, four, and so on. Twenty. That's twenty-five. And 30. All right. So for a second, I'm going to pass that back through the notch. So it's going to go the other way from the way I put it in to start. And that holds my string in place so it doesn't come unraveled. So keep in mind, you're not doing this super, super tight. You don't want your cardboard to bend. But at the same time, you want to do it tight enough that it doesn't slide off when you turn it over. And then you're just going to snip right here on the yarn and cut it like this. All right. And I'm just going to set it aside for a second. Lindsay, do we have any questions? So there, some people are wondering if you could repeat the notches part of the template. They want to see the notches part again? Yes, yeah, or if you could just go over um, how to do that part. Yeah, sure. So it, for, the, for the shorter template, so this is the three by four, you're just going to make two little cuts in one side of the long end. So see how, here, this will be, let me find this one. So you can see the measurements on there. So this is the longer side and this is the shorter side. So on one of the short sides, you're going to make a notch over on this one side and a notch over on the other side. And it just has to be like a quarter of an inch. So not very, not even like, not even a finger width, like half a finger width. It's super tiny. And you're gonna, on the long ones, the five inch one, you're just making one notch. You don't need two. Because what we're gonna do is we're wrapping the long one with one color, and we're gonna wrap the short one with two colors. All right, so now that you've wrapped your red, your next two colors are your shorter template colors. So if you're doing white and gray, this is where we're going to wrap our white and our gray. If you want to do different colors, that's perfectly fine. Just remember, the top color always goes on the longer template. All right, so I'm going to unravel a little bit of yarn here. All right, so this gray is really thin that I picked. So I'm going to go around about 35 times on the gray. So same concept here. So you're taking the end of your yarn and you're just going to pass it through this little notch and it's going to hold your yarn in place like this. You can see. All right. And I'm going to go around 35 times. That halfway 
to a hundred. Nope. Almost. Almost to a hundred. Fifteen times, so I'm almost halfway there. Thirty. And I'm gonna do five more times. All right, five. And then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna put it back in that notch so that it stays still. And then I'm gonna trim, trim it off. And then scooch the yarn down to the side where the notch is that you've put it in so that you have space on this other side. Because then you're gonna take your next color of yarn and you're gonna wrap it around the other side. Now, this yarn is a lot thicker. So see, I'm gonna lay two up here so you can see. So see how this gray is really thin? That's why I did 35 turns on the gray. If you have a regular size yarn, which is what this white one is, you're just gonna do 25 turns. All right. I'm gonna pull off a bunch of yarn here. It makes it a lot easier, unless you can get your yarn to come out of the middle and then it works really well. You don't have to unravel a bunch. All right. So again, take your yarn, pass it through this little notch here on the side. So for the next color, you're gonna use the notch on the other side. And then you're gonna go around. So for this one, I'm just gonna go around 25 times because this is a regular thickness of yarn. Okay, and then when you use that last one, you're going to pass it back through the notch the other way so that it holds it and then cut your string. All right, so, and then you can kind of scrunch it down to the side like this so that you have two colors here and you've got your one color that goes on top on your, on your long template. So this is what you should have. All right. Any questions before I move to the next step? Okay, so the next thing I do is I like to cut a section off of each color because you're gonna, we're gonna tie each color. So you're gonna cut about 12 inches of yarn. 10 or 12 inches. You don't have to be super precise. You're going to do one of each color. And if it's a little longer than that, that's okay too. Okay. Now this is the part you want to you want to take your time with. So you're gonna take, you're gonna take the yarn off the template and you're gonna cut one of, uh, you're gonna cut across it once you get it off and that's gonna give you some really long strings and you're gonna lay them out flat. So gently slide your yarn down to the end and when you get to the end, you can unhook these two that are, that are in your, your little groove and go ahead and slide the yarn off your template gently and make sure that you're holding in the middle of the of the loop so that when it slides off you have the loop like this and you should hold it so that those two tails of your yarn you can see them right here are down at one end because then what you're going to do is you're going to cut right in the middle where, of where those two tails are. And you're gonna lay your yarn open. So it'll lay out flat like this. Okay. 
And again, take your time. Don't rush the step because you don't want it to unravel on you. I mean, worst case scenario, if it unravels really bad and you can't rescue it, you just re-spin it around your template. It's, uh, it's not the end of the world. I just want to make sure you guys know to go slow on this one. All right, so once you get that one off, lay it aside and you're going to lay it horizontal to you. So lay it long ways like this. And then you're going to do the same thing with your second color, which is going to be the belly of your bird. So the long color is the top of your bird and whichever color you want to be the belly of your bird, that's going to be your next color. So for me, it's white. So I'm going to untuck the tails from the little notch. And then I'm gonna carefully slide the bunch off. And then you're gonna cut in between where the two tails fall, right? So the side that has the tails, that's where you're gonna cut. So that you have another grouping. Now this one, you're going to lay perpendicular to the red. So you're, it's like you're making a cross. So you just lay the, the, your white or your belly color, the belly of the bird, across the top of the bird, which is red for me. And then you're going to fold the red over the white so that the tails are even. So you want all the tails to stop at the same point over here, like this. And then I found that it's easiest if you then pull the whites up so that you can kind of make a tight loop. So see how it's looped like this. And then you're gonna take your red string or whatever color the top of your bird is. So match, match the color, whatever color you're using for the bird top and you're going to go around your bird and I go around twice or three times and the reason why I do that is it gives you it doesn't relax on you as bad when you're trying to tie the knot so I just circle it around a couple of times I'm going to try to do this while I show you guys so pull it around the the red a couple of times I'm going to do three here and then you can tie your knot. So it's easiest to do laying down, obviously. I was trying to hold it where you guys could see it, but I'll hold it up. So then you just pull it down tight and do it again so that it won't come unraveled. So two knots should be fine. And then very, very carefully, you're going to trim. Don't cut it too close that it unravels. All right, so now you have the red one tied and it's tied around this white part here. So then make sure your yarn's even and then you're gonna do the exact same thing on the white side or the whatever color side that you've chosen for the belly of your bird. So you're just gonna pull it down and take the core, you know, the corresponding color string that you just cut and go around a couple of times. And again, this is just so that when you get to the part where you're tying the knot, it doesn't unravel on you as bad. Okay, and then just tie it down tight. Tie it down again. And then very, very carefully, so that you don't cut any strings that you don't want to, you're going to trim the end off here. Don't cut it too close and don't cut any of your other strings. All right. So now you should have, now you should have the white and the red interlocked like this. Okay. Now, You've got one more color here. So the, this is your the wings of your bird. So when you think about your bird like this, so this is the beak, this is the top, 
the white is the bottom. Your wings are these colors here. So this is the speckled gray. So again, you're gonna undo the little tails from the notch like this and very carefully slide the yarn off the end. Hold it so that the little tails dangle down and you know where to cut like this. And then you're going to put the scissors into the end of the loop and cut and then lay them open. Oop, I missed one. All right. Lay them open. And you got 35 strands. It's easy to miss one. Okay. Now, this part is um, this part can be just a little bit tricky, so I'm going to do it, and then if I have to do it again, um, that's fine. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're going to make the inside of the bird. So I'm going to show you, like, you're laying the knot over the gray, but in reality, it's going to be underneath. So I'm just, I'm showing it upside down so you know what it's supposed to look like. So the knot that you've created here between your two colors where they've linked, you're gonna put that on the back side in the middle of your, of your wing color, just like this. Okay, and then you're gonna take a small piece of paper, like six inches by six inches, or you can take a paper towel. So I've taken like one of those small sheets of paper towels and torn it in half. Um, you can use uh, pom-poms if you have pom-poms. You can make a tight little ball of yarn and wad it up and put it in the middle. Basically all you're doing is you're, you're creating like a, a body for the bird. So inside this bird is hidden a towel or it can be a piece of construction paper or whatever you have. You, it does not have to be anything specific. I will say if you're using yarn, don't use bunches of loose yarn. You're gonna wanna like spin it into a ball so that it doesn't come unraveled. So once you've made that into a ball, you're gonna lay it on top of the knot. So we've got the knot underneath here, and then you've got your wing color laid on top of it. And then you've got your, your towel or your pom-pom or whatever that's gonna go in the middle. And then you're going to take all of the sides. I wanna, I'm going to say this before I actually do it. But you're going to take all of the sides of yarn and you're going to envelop the paper or your paper towel or whatever in the middle. So you're, you're basically going to pull it all up and surround it so that it's in one piece. So like this right here. And if you, if you do it and you don't think that it looks right, you can just lay it all back down and do it one more time. So you wanna make sure, let's see, make sure that your, your top color comes down the middle. And your bottom color goes down the side. So think of this as, the, the stripe that comes down the face of the bird, and then the, your, your belly color is gonna be like the cheeks of the face. So here, look at my bird that's finished. So see here, the eyes and the nose, or the beak, and then the red comes back. So that's all you're doing is you're positioning this knot so that your top color comes to a point at the face and then comes all the way back across. And then your belly color goes down, but it comes up the side like cheeks. And then your wings are on the side. And see, I've just looped my fingers around it to hold it so I can show you. And we're gonna take our last piece of string, which is the wing color, and you're gonna go around the bird just like we did those other pieces. And that's what's going to 
make the body from the tail of your bird. So again, I would go around about three times and then tie your knot on the bottom. So tie it toward the belly color so that you don't see the knot on the bird. Okay, and then you can trim it. You can trim the string. Just like this. All right. So now you have your little bird face and your wings and then your tail, which we're going to trim in just a second. All right, so before we trim the tail, Lindsay, I'm sure there are questions. Um, I think most of the questions are currently about seeing them again. So I've let people know that if we have time, we'll be able to make another one. Um, but so far, um, people are wondering what to do if it came undone while they were working on it. If you have a tip for that. Yeah, so if you're talking, so anything that comes undone, you can just organize back. So if your loop comes undone when you slide it off, just re retie your loop. If they come, you know, if, if you are trying to tie it and the strands come apart when you're, uh, when you're trying to tie like these interlocking pieces, just stop and lay your pieces of string out again. I mean, they're all the same size. So really what you're doing is you're just relaying your string so that they're all in a row and they're uniform. And then you can start over again in the instructions. Um, the, like I said, the most tricky part for me is when you're, when you're doing this final part of trying to get the, the little cloth or paper inside the bird, um, that can be a little tricky. And if you mess that one up, again, just set everything down, lay everything back out and start again. And if you, um, I think it's probably, in the the chat um but there's there's actually photo directions for the project so if you go to the directions page for the project there's a link that says click here i think it's on step two and it'll show you like 12 or 15 different steps on how to do all of these pieces of folding the yarn all right yeah we'll put that link in the chat for everybody perfect all right, so I'm going to let me just grab a different pair of scissors. I'm going to just trim up the tail here. Remember to use your safety scissors for this, guys. Don't want any cut fingers. And this will be easy. You don't have to have any special scissors for cutting, um, you know, the yarn piece. Yarn's pretty easy to cut. And you're just trimming up the, the yarn pieces on the tail so that they're even. Or if you want to give them a fun little flourishing tail, you can do that too. All right. So once it's nice and even here, so you, you see it's starting to come together. This is the side views, front view, bottom, top, tail. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make the feet. And then the last thing we'll do is glue on the eyes and the beak because um, those will have to dry. So once you get the beak and the eyes on, you have to leave it alone uh, until those pieces have time to dry. All right, so for the feet, let's do orange to match the beak. All right, so the instructions have you making feet with um, pipe cleaner and then cutting the pipe cleaner. I found a way that I think I like better where you can, you can use one pipe cleaner instead of two and you don't have to cut it that way. And that is to run the pipe cleaner through the yarn at the belly. So if you think about where the tail is and then you've got the string and then you've got the belly and then you have another string for the head, you're gonna put the feet in through the yarn of the belly. So you're not going to go all the way through the middle of the bird. You're going to do it kind of to the end and you're just going to pull it through until there's equal amounts of the pipe cleaner on both sides of your bird. And then you're just going to bend them down like this and then 
about an inch away from the bird's body. You're going to bend them out. So it looks like he has really long skis. You can have a snowbird, I guess. Keep going skiing. All right, and then you're going to make three toes. And the way you make your toes, you're going to take about half an inch now, and then you're going to bend it back. And then you're going to bend it forward, and then you're going to bend it back and forward and back until you're all out of pipe cleaner. And now you have three toes. So see, a three-toed redbird. All right, and then you're gonna do it on the other one. So an inch away from the body, you bent it out into a ski. And then you're gonna take half an inch, which, which for me, for you know an adult, I guess, it's about the width of my finger and thumb here. So if I pinch it right here, then I bend it back and forward and back and forward and back so that I have three toes. So now I have two feet each with three toes. And that way I don't have to glue the, the pipe cleaner. I don't have to worry about cutting the pipe cleaner. I just have it already there. So you can see little, little black feet and then little orange feet. You can make purple feet, pink feet, whatever color feet you want. You put shoes on them. All right. Now I'm going to do the beak. So you're going to take a piece of uh, cardstock construction paper. If you don't have um, colored paper, that's okay. You can use white regular typing paper or drawing paper, and you can just color it orange. Um, you know, you don't have to have orange paper. I just cut a strip off of the side of my paper here. And then um, I'm going to cut a rectangle. And I feel like, okay, let's just confirm with my ruler. So it's about an inch long and it is three quarters of an inch wide. So a little rectangle. And you again, you don't have to measure it, but I know some of you like to measure things. So if you're one of those people, an inch long by three quarters of an inch wide, and then you're gonna make a diamond out of it. So the there, there's an easy way to do this. Let me find my pencil. So you can you can make a, a little hash mark in the middle of each side. And I'll I'll put this up close so you can see it. So, oh man, I may have to get that really close before you can see it. Can you see the dots on the sides? Hard to see. So in the middle of the side, so here's the side. In the middle, I put a tiny little dot on the edge and I did it on every side. So there's a dot in the middle of the edge. And what that did is it's gonna give me a diamond shape when I cut it. So you're gonna cut from a long side to a short side dot. So long side, so just line it up with your scissors and keep your fingers out of the way when you cut this. Use your safety scissors. And you're just cutting from one dot on the side to the dot on the short side. And then you're gonna rotate it and you're gonna do the same thing. So the dot should now be in the, mid in the middle of that point. You're gonna cut from the dot to the dot. So now I have a point, it looks like a house. And then I'm gonna do the other side. So dot to dot, and then the last side, dot to dot. All right, like this. So now I have a diamond. Oops. See? And then you're gonna fold that diamond in half across the short side, or across um, from the short points, you're gonna fold there so that the long points stick out because that's the beak. And I'm just using my thumbnail to crease it. You can use the edge of the table. Like you can put it on the edge of the table and bend it against the table if you wanted to, or a straight, you could use a straight edge. So you're just folding it in half now. So now it makes a triangle. And when you look at it from the side, it's open like a beak, a little bitty baby beak. All right. 
and then you're going to glue that beak down to the yarn right where your top color ends. So see how your top color comes down into a point? That's kind of where you're laying your half of your diamond. So you're going to lay that bottom fold so that it matches that point. So see how when I lay it there, it, it looks the same. So just take a little bit of your glue, put it straight on the yarn, and then you're just going to lay half that beak down. And I leave it open on one side. And remember, use glue that will dry clear for you. Okay, so see, it, it looks, it's the same as that red. It comes to the point just where the red is. And then the beaks open if you look at it from the side. And then this is if you look at it from the front. Okay, so be real careful because that's wet and it's gonna wanna come off. So I'm just gonna set my bird down for a second and get my googly eyes. And if you don't have googly eyes, you can do all kinds of things. You can make little yarn eyes. You can cut little eyes out of paper. Um, give the bird really long hair that covers its eyes so you don't have to put eyes on. All right. So same thing here for the, for the eyes. I'm just going to put little dots of glue on the bird right where I want the eyes. So I'm going to put one here and one here. And then I'm just going to set the eyes in. Ooh, my glue is going to run away. And then when it dries, it'll be all clear. And then you're going to want to set your bird down. So this is why we do the gluing last because you're gonna to have to set it to the side for a little bit to make sure that it doesn't, you know, fall apart on you. So just, you can set the little bird up on his feet, just like that, and he'll sit right there for you and let those eyes and beak dry. And that should take, oh, a couple of hours, I would give it a couple of hours before you play with it too very much. Um, you can show it off within probably 15 minutes. It's tacked up, but just to be on the safe side, don't play with it for a little bit until it has time to really set it up nicely. So that's pretty easy. That's pretty much it. Lindsay, what kind of questions do we have? Um, it seems that there's some people who want to see how to do the body part again, if we have time to go over that. Sure. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of the easiest thing to do. I think I'm going to unwrap this one that's dry already, and then I'll show you with this one. I'll be faster and easier than running a bunch more yarn. Okay. I'm just going to take his little feet out here. All right. So remember, you've got your two colors that you've linked together and you're gonna lay them down flat. And you're gonna lay it so that your top color makes a point. So see how this top color makes like a, a point? And then the bottom color of your bird, which for us is white, goes up on the side. So those are the cheeks. And you're going to lay it down like that. Sorry, the beak is the beak is not wanting to lay down. There we go. Um, okay, and then you're going to take your wing color, which for us is this speckled gray, and you're just going to lay it out across that looped part. So see, I didn't move it, so I have my red point and my white cheeks, and I'm just going to lay this gray across the top of it like this. 
all right? And then you're gonna take your piece of paper, and again, we talked about this needs to be like six inches by six inches square. So you can, I just use a paper towel, you know? It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can, you can ball up some yarn, you can use a crushed piece of paper, whatever you have on hand. And you're gonna put that right in the middle. So before I put it together, I'm gonna to show you the layers here. So you've got your, your looped on the bottom, your, your wing color coming across the top, and then your ball of paper on top. And then I'm just gonna scoop it all up and bring it up into one wad. So you're just taking that yarn and you're bringing it around the ball. Now, it may be easier for you to start with this wing if you want. So if you don't wanna try to do it all at once, you can bring the wings up kind of together first around the, around the ball. And then you can bring your side colors up or you can try to do it all at once. And you're just gonna bring all your, your pieces together. And you can feel that ball in there of paper inside the bird. So you're just gonna and smooth down your, your yarn fibers here. You're just gonna make a little ball so it's all fluffy where the tail is. And I'm just holding it with my fingers here for a second. And make sure all your pieces are laying down. So now you can see, here's our bird. So you've got your, your top color, your belly color, and your wing colors on the side. And then you're just gonna take the same yarn color as the wing, and then you're gonna tie it around the tail where I'm holding it with my fingers. All right, so let me grab one more piece of yarn. And while I'm holding it, I found it's easiest to do this. You can kind of hold it with your, with your hand, the yarn, and then just go around a couple of times with the yarn. And then I always tie it on the bottom so that the knot's on the bottom. You're just gonna tie it, tie it down tight, and then do it one more time so that there's a, a square knot and it won't come undone. And then very, very carefully, you're gonna trim the yarn. So don't cut, don't cut yourself, don't cut the yarn you don't want to. Oh, and one of the eyes came off. All right, I'll glue it back on. All right. Hopefully that helped. It can be a little tricky. Like I said, those directions um, that you can find online, clicking the link, uh, you can go into the project and then from the project on step two, it shows you um, another link that you can click on and it gives you these step outs that show um, each, each step of the yarn process. So it'll show you how to wrap it, uh, cut it, and um, you know put the bird together. So, and then I'm gonna wait to put his little feet back in until that eye dries. So, all right, any last questions I can answer? Can you possibly go over the legs on the bird again? Sure. And there's a question on if there is a, if there's, another way that they could put the legs on the bird if they are struggling? Um, I, I mean, you I can... I don't know if glue would work very well. What is it? Because I don't know if glue would work very well for the legs. Yeah, I mean, I think the instructions have you poking the legs up into the bird, but I, I mean, I, I found that the method of passing the legs through the middle of the bird and around did two things. It it was sturdier for the legs and it was also easier because I didn't have to cut the pipe cleaner. So all right so for those who want to see this method again I just I took a pipe cleaner and went straighten it back out um, and I'm going to pass it through the belly colors of the yarn. So it doesn't have to be all the belly colors. I'm just going to pinch some up here. So you're just going to poke it through under about half those, those strands. I'm 
wonder um, for those that are having trouble, I'm trying to think of what you could do. Um, you might be able to take like a pencil, let me see, like a, just like a number two pencil. And you might be able to go through, cause it may go through easier. So it kind of create a, a hole in the yarn and then you could pass it through easier that way. It wouldn't get caught in the yarn as bad maybe. Um, yeah, glue, I don't know that glue would work so well on the, on the legs. I feel like you might just end up with a blobby mess. But you might try the pencil method. All right, there we go. Right. So you're going to go halfway through your bird here so that there's equal distance on both sides. And then you're gonna bend them forward so you can see they're the same length. So it looks like the bird has really, really long legs. And then about an inch away from the body, you're gonna bend the legs out at a right angle. So now it just looks like the bird is on skis. You can see the ski, ski feet. And then about half an inch out on the little foot is where you're gonna grab here. It's easier if I do it upside down. So from the bend, you're just gonna grab right there by the bend. And then that's about half an inch and you're just gonna bend it back. So now see it's pointing the other direction. And then you're gonna, you're gonna bend it back out. So think of this as like you've made one little hump. And you're going to do it again, bend it out and back in. So now you have two little humps. And then one last time out and back in so that you have three little humps or feet in this case. And you're just going to do the same thing on the other side. So grab it right at the bend so you can see the bend in the pipe cleaner. And you're going to come back and out and back and out and back. So that you have three, three little feet. And if you don't have pipe cleaners, you can use, um, you know, you can make some little paper feet. You can use craft sticks probably and come up with some little feet. Or you can have a nesting bird that has no feet. So, all right. Any last questions, guys? So everyone is saying that it their birds turned out super cute. We awesome. Have them name their bird Mr. Chirpy. Excellent. I am super happy that they turned out great. I was very pleased with this uh, project when I did it too. I thought uh, it looked super complicated. Like when I first looked at it, I was like, oh my goodness, what am I getting myself into? And, um, and you know, the thing that helped me was those step out instructions, the pictures that are on the project, uh, and then just doing it. I mean, I did it one time and it went pretty well and um, you know, it'll, it's, it's fun and I think it'll impress people like you can uh, make birds and have them sitting all around your house and give them to people and um, I think it can be fun. I like making little, little animals and stuff like this. So, all right. Well, Lindsay, thank you. And guys, thanks for coming to Kids Club today. I hope you guys had a good time. Remember, on Thursday, we'll have another Kids Club that you can come join. Uh, so I hope to see you guys there. All right. All right. Talk to you next time.